good afternoon everyone and i welcome today's panel on pr execution millennials versus gen z and how ai is 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 impacting the whole pr system okay and i am karishma sen i represent goodword media this is a pr agency based uh, in delhi only and i'm thrilled to be your moderator for this engaging session and we are delighted to have with us a ding distinguished panel and experts of the pr and communication industry allow me to introduce uh, introduce them to you we have silky from avian media we have shashank koshik from fusions public relations and we have ashish rao from rec limited okay together our panelists will explore the nuance of pr execution for millennials and gen z and delve into the significant impact of ai in our field okay so let's start with the question number 1 what fundamental difference have you observed in the communication preferences between millennials and gen z how does this impact the overall pr strategies so let's direct the question towards silky so um, karishma when i hear the word gen z you know the first thing that strike in my mind is instant okay instant and um, i think that's what they are looking for instant communication their communication has to be short form uh, video centric um, catchy uh, bite size and therefore you will find them either using instagram or snapchat or tiktok so when tiktok got banned there a lot of chatter happened you know correct correct by them actually. only um whereas millennials are the one who is actually looking for more detailed information you know they correct. prefer engaging content they prefer storytelling and therefore you will find them you know either on facebook twitter or consuming podcasts so we heard you know the previous session on podcast correct. you know is where you know millennials are looking more keen towards that so you know this is what you know gen z and millennials choice of communication is but one thing common with them is both prefer genuine communication you know they want transparent and authentic and i think brands have to be mindful when they're talking with both the generation in this they are the one who's you know who who will stand with you when you have a purpose when you are contributing to the society and they will not shy to shame you you know if you're not in the list so i think this two piece is very crucial you know when brands or campaigns are made amazing yes that's absolutely right shashank would you want to answer yes so for differences communication differences preferences we need to understand the why now how, how silky said that gen z want instant uh, communication okay. let's understand uh, let's just uh, let me take time to uh, take you through a short uh, history like what are uh, there is gen x there is gen y and there is gen z so okay. you know 1965 to 1980 are your gen x then now 1981 to your 1995 is gen y which is millennials which is us which yeah. is us which is us millennials and then 1997 uh, to your 2000 currently 24 is your gen z or now there is another term called gen z alpha so there are these terminologies coming in let's understand from 65 it was just simpler it was very simple they had tv radio broadcast and that was a newsletter then came disruptions in the communication industry during millennials we millennials are the ones who have seen it all <laughs> we, have, we have seen it all from 1993 the advent of internet to 2003 social media came in and now 2023 ai so we have seen these disruptions so i think where gen x was comfortable with traditional media millennials are comfortable with uh, because Mix they are born both. and brought up with traditional and now they have experienced digital as well they are comfortable with both uh, traditional and digital media then came in gen z like they are the digital natives we call correct so now gen z are the digital natives they are born and brought up with mobile phones smartphones in their hand so they Pref they are on various platforms. Millennials might use two or three platforms like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Gen Z, your Gen Z will communicate in uh, platforms like Discord, uh, Discord and Stitch. 
Discord and Stitch, these are instant platform. As you say, the attention span of Gen Z is very less, around eight seconds, uh, compared to millennials, 12 seconds, they say, very minor difference. Mm. But uh, Gen Z want, wants instant communication, which is given to them by Stitch and Discord. They are, 80% of them are gamers, so they prefer live, uh, live streaming, streaming. They prefer live, uh, it, like AI chatbots. They prefer live communication, instant communication, instant gratification. So I think this is one major difference. While millennials might consume both traditional and digital aspects, your Gen Z will come, uh, will, as Silky said, instant, instant things they want as they have less of patience. Okay. Ashish, what's your views? <coughs> First of all, thanks for calling me for this panel. <coughs> uh, most of the time I'm sitting on the other side of the table when I try to learn from people like you. Uh, with regards to the way the content has been consumed by Gen Zs and Millennials, as it has been rightly put by uh, all of you, that uh, for Gen Z it is mostly instant gratification. For Millennials, I would simply put it that way, uh, they're not looking for instant gratification. Both, both these communities are mostly uh, consuming content more digitally now. The thing is, uh, the Millennials are using that content to create their own set of information. I would put it like basically putting it uh, in a fashion of data mining for themselves. They would try to fabricate something through that information. But for Gen Z, it would be instant gratification and they can easily jump onto that bandwagon. So that's where it is very important for brands to communicate the right piece of information to them. And for AI, I mean, if I stitch this with AI, AI tools that we're using today, they are basically the ingredients. They, give, they, will, they will give you the statistical data. So uh, uh, to simply put it in the perspective of uh, if I give some ingredients to Gordon Ramsay and he would prepare a dish for you, the way you use your ingredients is going to decide what would your dish taste like. So it's for us, for humans, to actually you know, use that data in a manner where it can give out the right piece of information to either Gen Z or millennials. There's another interesting thing that I would like to point out here. Uh, and uh, as a part of my portfolio, I also handle a lot of uh, uh, investor relations. So uh, we are constantly talking to our international investors. The initial, uh, what was that thing before, gen, before millennials? You had a coin. Gen X. Gen X. Gen so X. Gen X usually used, was using the traditional media, but now they are getting to the bandwagon of the millennials. Mm. They are also using podcasts because for them anything in detail, any information in detail is what, how they used to consume. So from print, they are moving to podcasts, as it was being pointed out in the previous session also. So podcasts, I feel the future of a lot of uh, Gen X communication is going to move towards podcasts because it is again a kind of a long format content. Uh, that is one thing which I'm surely uh, 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 vouching for. Yeah, I think because they relate to it, they used to listen radios a lot. Yes, so exactly, 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 also, exactly. Also, I agree, you know, when you said podcast is basically for Gen X, they are evolving themselves. And millennials are in any case using because so they have the detailed information. But I agree with Mamta when she said in the a previous session, you know, it's also important to, uh, you know, refurbish, repurpose uh, the thing. Because Correct. if you, you just don't want to limit yourself to Gen X or millennials, you know, Gen Z is also, you know, and since they are looking for instant, how we can create podcasts more interesting in a short form. You know, so the forms of podcasts can be also leveraged to target both the generations. Another important thing, uh, I also handle a lot of government communication. So there are a lot of government schemes which I handle. I handle the communication for Sobhagya, which was the household electrification scheme. Currently, if you want, uh, I mean, uh, I'm also handling uh, the communication piece uh, and the strategy piece for PM Sudhagar Mukt Bijli Yojana, which is the rooftop solar scheme. So okay. when we design the communication, we have to cater because now when we talk about any government or any uh, uh, populist schemes, we are not talking about a specific set of people we have to target each and every citizen of this country. So I have to talk to Gen X, I have to talk to millennials, and I have to also talk to the Gen Z. So that's how the content is prepared. On the one hand, I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing print, I'm doing opits, yeah. I'm also doing, uh, uh, for the Gen Z, I'm doing reels, yeah. I'm doing uh, uh, testimonials for millennials. So there is a combination of how you reach out to people. So. I simply put, I would say that Gen X 
millennials and Gen Z all are going to stay. It's only how you communicate to them. That is how it is. Yeah, therefore, you know, a peer strategy should be like that we should adopt a multi-platform. Uh, you know, you cannot limit to one in Absolutely. order to reach both yes. the generations or, you know, any type of generations. That's very crucial. And, <clears throat> you know, we also have to curate the messaging and uh, the tonality of what they want. You know, we know what way they, uh, they are fine or, you know, what they want before. So if we know that, I think if we can curate or tailor our messaging and campaigns, I think that's a win-win for us. Yes, we will definitely have to tailor our messaging to all our audiences, X, Y, and Z, as he said. And most importantly, it has to be, uh, we have to, considering India, as demographically such a huge and a vast country, we have to consider uh, uh, the translation of yes. these correct, uh, correct. Uh, communication so different the languages, uh -huh. yeah, which have to make sense there. Yeah. Like for smart meters, we did something for smart meters. We used the song, uh, Sarjo Tera Chakrai, mm -hmm. Ya, uh, Del Duba Jai, Aja Pyare Paas Hamare, okay. that, that song is there. So, Bijli Ka Bil Zada Aay, Ya, so the tonality was the jai, same. Yeah, yeah. Aaja paas, tu smart meter so similarly, we use such content for even regional uh, channels. So, but not using the same tone. We used, we picked something from the 1960s or 1980s, which was more catchy. We used those According songs. to their region. According to their region. Correct. Okay. Uh, we come to the second question. In content creation, what difference exists in the preference of millennials and Gen Z? How can PR teams evolve their content strategy to resonate with both the audiences? Um, let's see what Ashish has to say for this. Uh, as I had already put, I mean, uh, if I talk about Gen Z and Millennials, most of the Gen Z and Millennials are consuming content digitally. It's only the format in which it might differ. If I okay. talk about Millennials, like if I talk about any of the communication that my company is letting out or for any of the government campaigns. So for millennials, it would be mostly in long format. It would be in the form of podcasts. It would be in the form of testimonials where the trust is built. I don't advertise something and stand for it as a brand. Rather, I would, as a brand custodian, I would try to uh, inform people how people who are using my services are feeling about it. So you believe that long format uh, works for millennials? For millennials. Okay. And if I talk about Gen Z, it is mostly instant gratification. If I talk about the PM Suregar Yojana, hmm. it talks about subsidy, it talks about uh, ease of use, it talks about uh, uh, free electricity after a certain point of time, it talks about the return on investment. So instead of making that content in long format, the long format content I'm using to convert it into smaller format content, into reels, into... Uh, uh, instant uh, 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 testimonials uh, wherein people are talking about uh, uh, what instant gratification that they would have got by using or switching to solar. So mm. the duration of the content won't be more than 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. That's how it is. So the content consumption basically is, uh, the difference is millennials would be spending time to create their own information set and uh, mine something out of it and maybe create their own opinions. But for Gen Z, it's on the go. It has to hit them multiple times through multiple channels. And that's how they are creating their own set of, uh, you know, uh, standards for a brand, for a communication, and for the longevity of communication. But you have to stay there with them for a longer period. You keep on hitting them from one way or the other. That's how it works. So do you think uh, that because, uh, you know, Gen Zs are always on their phone or social media, so on and so forth, so they consume a lot of content. So how do you... Uh, make your messaging more impactful for Gen Z uh, and Millennials also, but yeah. So most of the, if I'm talking about the uh, content uh, 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 when I'm talking about uh, Gen Z and Millennials, so we have also started doing a lot of uh, native content advertising. So we, sometimes what happens is we are uh, in this uh, uh, bandwagon of advertising, doing, uh, you know, uh, Google AdWords, but uh, that is not going to give you a lot of uh, uh, the CTA for that is not really high these days, you know. For them to have an opinion about something, uh, we used a lot of native content for uh, creating that uh, opinion amongst Gen Z and millennials uh, for how a scheme or how an organization is working. And so these kind of communication is very important for us now. Instead of going with the traditional uh, 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 Google AdWords kind of advertising in the digital space. Uh, we are also working on content uh, wherein we are creating series 
uh, with uh, history, with Netflix, wherein we want to, you know, it's, it's, it's under process, wherein we want to create uh, some content directly or indirectly, which talks about uh, financial literacy. So, because uh, again, we feel as an organization, you know, we are uh, listed, we are a li publicly listed company and uh, there are a lot of financial frauds that also happen. So we need to educate them in a manner where they consume that uh, content in the form of a, a, a 15 minute or 20 minute uh, piece of uh, uh, a telefilm, but the message resonates, resonates with them. So sure. we, yeah, we have to put that content inside that piece of information rather than uh, constantly bombarding uh, that through advertising. Okay. I'll catch on yeah. to this. The resonate part which he said hmm. is very important. I'll tell you, uh, when we said ki they want instant, hmm. instant is for engaging them because their attention spans are short, 8 seconds which I said. But once you engage them, once that they feel that they are interesting, then they can go to any length. Gen Z are the most binge watchers of the entire generations. And I'll tell you a fact, 43% of the podcast consumers are Gen Z. So the pod, but that's because that podcast must have resonated to them. So just for instance, that, that's because how they grew up. Now millennials, if I say Shaktiman, Shaktiman, Kaun Banega Karodpati, Mahabharat, DDLJ, you millennials, uh, ka sorti zindagi ki, some of you will start twirling your hair for Komonika. I'm sure. <laughs> and true. when I say Mahabharat, koi na koi bol dega bhanje shakuni wala. And we all, we all, hum paanch, uh, and all these Dragon Ball Z and all, we have grown up watching these. Millennials we resonate ek, with haan, them. Yeah. Ek umbrella ke niche, we have watched. But now, Gen Z has been exposed to the world through internet. They have been exposed. Now, some of them will resonate with anime. Some of them, you won't even know what Naruto is or something. Some of them with, will resonate with K-pop. Now, I won't know what K-pop is. So, it, our PR person's job has become difficult. Gen Z is the upcoming consumer. Abhi tak millennial ke saath hum deal kar rahe the. Ab the upcoming consumer is Gen Z. And we have to see what they resonate with. Another and we have to draft. important thing that we are missing hmm. out, I think so, hmm. is most of the brands now, through their communication, are not only trying to, you know, uh, bombard the message for the brand. They are trying to create communities around it. Yes. Correct. So Correct. Very it is very important that we have to create the communities. Most important. You know, while we have got their attention, mm -hmm. you know, you need to make sure that how you ensure that they are engaged and connected. You know, and therefore this moment marketing uh, is something you know which is trending. You, yeah. you talk about how you can leverage, you know, trends and, you know, with humor. I'm not saying sacrifice professionalism, but, you know, still how you can, you know, make it more quirky because that's what they like it. Um, brands like, you know, we, we know Zumato, Swiggy, they always jump into the trends and there's a banter about it. You know, Pavri Hore, the Swiggy, how they started the trend. Or to that matter, Amul, you know, they are like perfect brand, you know, always leverage on cricket, elections and anything. And we, and Amul girl is something, you know, not only millennials, but Gen Z, they're Everybody connected. Everybody resonates yeah. to that. So Amul I girl. think, you know, um, these exciting, quirky ways, you know, which uh, get the attention of Gen Z and, you know, it help you engage with them throughout um, is something, you know, which yeah. talked, uh, we should consider. Like Cadbury did in their uh, Valentine Day campaign just for us. They, they said, share your story and they'll make an animation about it. And then again, one of the Cadbury's one only, uh, they said, uh, not just a Cadbury advertisement. They made advertisement for all the uh, local shop owners. Correct. So such kind of things yeah, really resonate. I agree when uh, Ashish in the beginning said, you know, uh, the ingredients which you want to put, you know, and then only you have a perfect dish. So I was just going through the various campaigns. Um, and, you know, I saw this campaign of Tic Tac, uh, the Mount Refreshno, Vibe Hair campaign. You know, they put things so rightly that they were able to grab the attention of Gen Z. Okay, they associate, they, they use basically celebrity power and they use catchy jingle, you know, which got the attention. So they associated with Ranveer Singh. He's known for when you talk about a vibe. Then they uh, uh, collaborated with content creator, which was Vishwas Mukhate for music composer. So what he did, he basically uh, broke the silence of boredom with the sound of the you know, box, the rattle sound, sound of the box. And you, you, if you see that, it's so catchy, you know, the colors which has been used, so vibrant, that they reached 20 million and 650 million plus impressions. 
you know that's the success of the campaign and i was when i was going through the campaign i was you know watching it on my laptop and my <clears throat> eight year old daughter she just walked by and after like an hour so i just i saw her humming that same jingle you know she's she's not gen z but i'm just saying you know how, if you put right ingredient you get the success you get that attention what you want so we if we sum up instant is resonating plus engaging okay. these thing three things i will say will for communicating with gen z instant resonating and engaging this comes and also you know whether you talk about gen z or you talk about millennials uh, whatever content you want to put it where or how you want to do it three things are very important you know in addition to what uh, shishank said your content has to be inspiring it has to be entertaining and at the same time it has to be educating you cannot compromise on these things whatever generation you want to talk about see, anything that's good will always sell see content if it's good served in the right banner it will always sell so be it gen z be it millennial be it gen x we will take it let's also talk about the role of ai in content creation what do you think about it sir? yeah so ai is like always like a debate whether it's a boon or a bane but yeah. you know we you know i personally think if there is a technology uh, why not use uh, to empower you but just make sure that it doesn't overpower and you know we know with ai we get access to a lot of data insights we can leverage that vast amount of data to understand our audience you know we can uh again curate our messaging accordingly uh we can tailor our campaigns accordingly we can you know basically it helps us in doing the real time performance review and do the cost corrections accordingly mm -hmm. so i think there is a lot of advantage if we use it rightly and you know one thing which i would definitely say you know when you're using ai Uh, the, the the PR professionals have to be very mindful. They have to be very responsible because you're you're dealing with the information of the brands or the clients which you are servicing, and it could be confidential. So, you know, use the technology, use it to empower you, but with full responsibility. I think that is something we all should keep in mind. And AI is there. You know, use it. Help you. You know, in making the campaigns. to the course collection analyze the what is the sentiment and get the things in real time which was not possible earlier so that's a way you can uh, put it in our own so i i believe that ai should empower you not overpower you right See, that's, it's that's it's that's ai a, it's artificial yeah. intelligence anything yeah, yeah. artificial is not going to stay hmm. at the end of it what's human is more important yeah. but so. you know what this is the millennials talking about it what do you feel gen z feel about it uh see if i talk about gen z's and uh, uh, their approach towards ai for them for now i simply think it's for them it's just a tool for engagement and enjoyment they don't know the power of the tool and how it can change the world yeah that's our responsibility yeah. gen z is there they are engaging on it they are creating uh, 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 the images of the future images of the present that's what they are doing it sometime uh, and we have to be really mindful of it because you know there is a lot of misinformation because of ai also yeah, yeah. there is a lot of misinformation deep deep there has to be something deep fakes they are actually changing the tone of the society sometimes yeah. that's right uh, most of the societies across the globe are struggling mm -hmm. because of deep fakes because of uh, uh, non synchronous or non harmonious use of ai so if there is a technology it should be used in a manner which is supporting the human kind rather than it is you know uh, exploiting the human kind to uh, create those sentiments create those numbers so it has to be uh, it has to be used very very well shashank what do you think about it i feel ai is a <laughs> blessing truly blessing because now for because of gen z we have so many pl platforms to cater to instagram ke liye banana hai and different different platforms now ai has helped us uh, do away with the boring task like किसी का इंटरव्यू किया हो तो वो ट्रांसक्रिप्शन और एनालिसिस साथ साथ दे देता है रिपोर्टिंग ऑटर एंड दीज का सिंथेसिया वीडियोस जल्दी से बन जाते हैं कैनवा से आर प्रेजेंटेशंस आर सो मच इम्पैक्टफुल सो ऑल दिस ए आईज हैव हेल्प्ड अस डू अवे विद रिडेंडेंट टास्क एंड फोकस मोर ऑन स्ट्रेटेजाइजिंग फोकस मोर ऑन टैकलिंग जेन जी टाइप ऑफ ऑडियंस फॉर होम वी हैव बट येस वेन 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 so silky talked about compromising one thing that we should because this gen z is very political correct audience authenticity is there and they are very politically correct for instance zomato ka jo instance hua tha uh, a customer had refused to take food from a uh, non hindu delivery boy okay. now what uh, zomato did is zomato said uh, 
food doesn't have a religion. religion. Food is the religion. So these kind of and this sort of messaging resonated well with Gen Z. It hit the it sentiment. Hit then. You, you yeah. take your stand, you know. Correct. You take a stand. S societal issues. But that Similar. communication was created by Zomato. It was not done by AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to take this intelligence into account. Hmm. So AI is an enabler. It will enable enable you to communicate effectively. Use it as that and use your human intelligence to be politically correct. So basically use AI as an intern is what or I as, always yes, say. Yes, or yes. as Absolutely. we can say in a very poorly constructed uh, phrase that Gen Z is woke on some matters and they like they are opinionated. But when it comes to content, the kind of content that we are creating, some people are creating as creators and we are witnessing it and absorbing it and realizing if it is for us. Where does AI come into that? So, you know, as I said, you know, you can, uh, you know, use AI to your advantage to understand uh, and uh, tailor your campaign and messaging. But at the same time, I also feel um, human touch is very vital. You know, no one right. can replace it. Um, you know, creative thinking, uh, strategy thinking, relationship building is something you know, it, it can't be replaced by AI. And I think millennials understand that. But no, I'm not sure whether Gen Z also understand. understand. And I agree, they don't understand the power of AI, which is, you know, important. But at the same time, the human touch cannot be compromised. And I think that is the Absolutely. understanding which Gen Z need to uh, understand. Because millennials have evolved, you know. We have right, seen both exactly. the Right, exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, the last question, how will the dynamic between millennials and Gen Z and AI shape the future of execution? I think again, we, we were discussing the same thing, you know, uh, you can use it into advantage of analyzing uh, the real time performance. Yes. Uh, you can use data to understand the, uh, you know, what your customers are saying, how you can tailor your messaging and campaigns accordingly. So yeah, AI can be used, but with full responsibility. See, communication yeah. is not a brain matter. Mm -hmm. Communication is a matter of the heart. Uh, so okay, you need to understand. Yes. So uh, logical, I think the right brain is the logical and the left brain is, right? so Emotion. keep it on the right hand side. <laughs> Don't let it go to the left side. It is going to, you know, change a lot of dynamics and it is going to, I mean, uh, how many of you still remember the 90s campaigns, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had that human touch. Huh. Human they, and now they hit the sentiments every right. quarter campaign changes and you still don't remember those campaigns. Correct. That's the... Yeah, but, but brands are using AI to uh, actually design campaigns which is uh, addressing the societal issues. You know, Panasonic just did it, uh, push for change mm. under their uh, green impact campaign, you know, where they're, you know, actually telling that how youth has to take a responsibility for a better tomorrow. You know, they are always committed for sustainability. You know, so while one uh, uh, hand, you know, when I'm talking about brand has to be conscious about the societal issues, and at the second hand, you know, they're also considering, you know, the, the power of AI, use that and, you know, take the stand. So that's a beautiful uh, campaign which Japan and Sonic just launched. So I'm what's your saying, take on it? So Shashank. I work in regional PR industry. I have right. to constantly tailor my messaging to regional audiences. Hmm. Hindi ke liye Hindi, Marathi ke liye Marathi, same on. And now, because of evolving landscape, Gen Z ke liye bhi meko personalize karna padega. So how we'll do it is through AI. AI will help us with all the data, all the stats, and then we will be able to personalize the communication. Very, we'll be able to personalize the communication as per the target audience. And uh, like Spotify is doing, tailoring your playlist for specifically for you and uh, whenever we think of buying any product when we say hairbrush your phone will start showing you hairbrush and all Correct. so ai yeah. will just help you personalize that communication effectively for your target audience that's it. do you think that's a threat as well uh, if it's used ethically everything is a threat if it's uh, non uh, not used uh, ethically Correct. so i think ai can be used very productively ashish yeah. I second uh, the opinion of all the panelists. I would definitely second that. Uh, anything used responsibly is going to yield good returns. Anything used irresponsibly is not going to yield good returns. That's, that's how the society, that's how any equation works. So it's very important for us to catch on a bandwagon, use it in a manner which would uh, optimize everything rather than decimate 
the whole essence of communicating the right thing to your consumers, your audience, whosoever you are talking about. Correct. Correct. I think so. Um, so now, as we approach to the end of our discussion, uh, uh, I would like to extend a heartiest thanks to our esteemed panelists, Silky, Chopra, Mehrotra, uh, Shashank, Kaushik, and Ashish Rao. Your insights into this evolving landscape of PR execution for millennials and Gen Z, and the transformative impact on AI, um, I mean, do you want to discuss on the take of each and conclude this, or? So, um, you know, my take would be, you know, whether you want to tap Gen Z or millennials, you just, you know, you create a content, you repurpose it, give, it, give them what they want. I think that is something, you know, brands has to be uh, careful about. And don't forget to show the human side. You know, that is very exactly. crucial because that emotion that AI can't win is just that, you know, that helps you, in, you know, sustaining your audience. So that human side, whether it's be your employee stories or it could be behind the scene, is something, you know, which brands should be conscious about. Yeah. Shashank, anything you would like to conclude? Yeah, my concluding remarks would be same. Uh, be instant, be engaging, be resonating in your messaging and be very political correct. Use AI as a supplement for your campaigns and being politically correct is very important. I would leave it at a caution because J.K. Rowling was the queen of millennials mm -hmm. and she was cancelled by Gen Z just because of one small remark. Cancelled uh, is yeah, such a Gen Z term. <laughs> so we, we, should, we should be very cautious in our communication, use AI productively and yes, resonate with the Gen Z. Yeah. I, I would just I say, cook. just be a good cook, use your ingredients wisely. Well, That's the perfect recipe. So Amazing. AI is yeah. your ingredient, you are the cook, use it wisely and everything will fall in place.